Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be taking a look at this new small outboard that I got. This is a three and a half horsepower Mercury outboard. And we're just going to do a overview of it today, give it a cold start, and just check out how this thing operates and just go over all the features available with this small outboard. I apologize for any noise in the background. That little guy right there, his name is Alf. We just got him and this is his second time in the yard and really is second time ever being able to run in all these leaves so i'm just letting him enjoy that while i show you this now even though this says mercury on the side it's actually not a mercury this is a tahatsu motor that was rebranded to mercury for years tahatsu made all of mercury smaller outboards i believe it was like to size 30 or 35 horsepower and lower they were just rebranded uh, mercury's from tahatsu that's why when you see the country of origin it's japan when you got to the 40 and 60 horsepower, well, those were made in China for Mercury. So first and foremost, this is a Japanese outboard made by another company. I have a 40 horsepower Tahatsu. I've had really good luck with it. That's why I kind of felt good about getting to go ahead and trying out this small outboard, but just something to keep in mind. So if you're looking in the market and you're trying to decide, you know, between several different brands and you see Tahatsu pop up, well, if you can get the Tahatsu cheaper, it's just this engine with a little bit different cowling design that actually makes it a little bit easier to service. You like being outside, buddy? I will call that a resounding yes. The reason I purchased this little outboard, this is gonna go on the back of a 10 foot Bass Raider. If you wanna see some tests done with that thing, just wait, I have a couple videos will be coming out as the river floods, but I have a 45 pound thrust trolling motor and it does okay, but heavy currents or longer fishing trips, well, it just runs out of juice. This thing produces about 90 uh, pounds of thrust, somewhere around in that area. So this is gonna help me get through a lot heavier current. And if I end up with a deer or a pig, well, this is gonna ensure I have the power to get it out, number one. And number two, if I want to go down to other areas of the land I haven't been able to with the trolling motor, well, this thing I'm able to go four or five miles down into the swamp. So it gives me a way uh, longer range time just with a gallon or two of fuel that you can see behind me. We'll get to that in a second. Now, the engine is small. It is an 85cc single cylinder engine. That's about what you expect for about this size. I have a Generac generator that is inverter and it's a handheld about 50 pounds. It has a 98 cc, so this is actually smaller than that. You have a third of a gallon fuel capacity or I think approximately one liter, maybe just a little bit below that. And what you have is a gravity fed system come from the tank down, go to your fuel line. You have a pack cock right here. We'll get to why that is a great feature in a second. And that allows you to turn and turn off your fuel. It then runs over to this fuel pump, which then goes into the carburetor. And of course that mixes with the air, goes into the cylinder, gets spark, ignition, and your engine runs. Overall, a third of a gallon is gonna last you for about an hour when you're going full tilt with this outboard. That's why I recommend carrying about a gallon or two of fuel with you. One gallon's obviously gonna give you close to three hours of runtime, while two gallons is giving you close to six, and just given that comfort of mind. Now, in terms of the simplicity of this motor, you don't have many electronics. You have the kill switch here. I'm not entirely sure what this is. This may be to kill the ignition coil, um, possibly uh, just to eliminate spark, I believe. But yeah, one single uh, spark plug, so that's all you gotta change out on a three-year basis, and quite honestly, depending how much you use this motor, you probably check it, and this will last a lot longer. Overall, pretty simple to work on. The major things you need to get to are, well, they're easy. Spark plug is right there. Fuel pump, if you have any issues, will be right here. Now keep in mind, and we'll get to this in a minute as well, you're gonna need fuel flow from the fuel hose through the tank to the fuel pump. Fuel pumps are good at pushing, they're not good at sucking. So you wanna make sure you have this thing pretty filled to ensure you have enough gravity or um, feed pressure to go down and push it into the pump itself. Well, you need to fill the oil, and that's just gonna be this cavity right here, and you do not have a dipstick. Instead, you have a viewing window right here on the corner, and you can see that that oil level is right there at the top of that mark, so we are good here, and that oil looks really clean. Now, when you need to empty the oil, 
It's a small 10 millimeter bolt right here. You just get a small catch pan and it takes 300 milliliters. Now, the only other maintenance you really gotta do yearly is the lower foot. You have this screw right here, one on the bottom. You just need to fill this back up with gear lube. That's really it. Super simple to do other than impeller changes and stuff like that. In the future, I will also do a video on how to service this entire outboard. It's a really simple procedure and something you could easily do yourself. Going over these features now, if you want to lay this motor on its side, you do it on this side, the one that is opposite of the tiller handle. You see these bars sticking out right here. These are to protect the cowling as well as the rest of the casing. And this is where you lay the motor. You can possibly see on video where that's a little scuffed up, maybe a little bit difficult to in this light. Kudos to Tahatsu for adding this feature, well, Tahatsu Mercury. This is a fuel shutoff valve. This is an incredibly important thing to use. If you want to save yourself the trouble of having problems with your carburetor in the future, when you are running it basically a lot during a short period of time, you don't have to worry about it as much, but say it's the last time you're running it this season or the next season, take this red tab. This is on where I have it now. Shut it off as the motor is running. Let the motor die by itself. Keep it on idle and let all the fuel run out. Let it just run empty. A carburetor, when it collects fuel, it, if, especially if it's ethanol, but even just non-ethanol or marine gas, it has the same issue. It degrades over time. Water can seep in. You get corrosion in the bowl. You get gunk in the needle. Then you got to take the carb off and everything. The way you fix all that, shut off your fuel flow. Let it run completely out. Let the entire system be empty. And I can nearly assure you that you're going to have way, way less problems when you come to bring it out the next season. All right, just want to go over that in a little bit more detail. Now you have a forward and neutral gear. You do not have a reverse. So if you need to go in forward, you're just going to push it down into the forward gear. If you don't need to be in gear, you put it in neutral. Simple as that. Here is your choke. You pull this choke out when you go to start the motor. A little bit tough to pull out. That just allows more flow into the carburetor, or not to the carburetor, to the engine. So you get um, more fuel to air ratio, which helps it get start a little bit easier. This is a pull start overall. Um, most people are gonna be able to start this engine. It doesn't require a whole lot of force. It's not too difficult. Now you do have pretty good compression in these engines, easily over 150 PSI. So something to keep note. I would say anybody over the age of five is gonna be able to start this five or six. And then probably people um, approaching 80 years old are gonna have a bit more difficult times, maybe 70. And those with shoulder problems, well, you may want to start these um, at the dealer or something just to see if you have the ability to do so. Now, right here, you have the kill switch or the kill cord. So, of course, when this is popped out, that's going to stop the engine. But it's just a nice little setup. Now, in order to stop the engine as it's running, you're going to push that in. And that's going to shut off spark and the engine will die. Down here, you have another couple simple controls. This bar right here, when you tilt your engine, you just take it, lift it up. Let's see if I can do this single-handed. You're gonna push that bar in, and it's gonna keep the engine stationary. Now on the back, this is going to tighten or loosen how easy it is to steer. Right now, it's pretty loose, so I can steer this engine really easily. However, if I were to tighten it up, this is gonna allow you to basically go in a straight line a lot longer without having to adjust the engine as much. Now, it's pretty rock solid. It's a lot more difficult to turn. We'll loosen that back up again. Now, to adjust the position of your outboard, such as how far it stays up, this pin right here, you're simply going to pull it out, and then this piece will move up and down this track. You have th four different positions. Yep, four different positions. I have it in the lowest currently. Once I get it on the boat, I'll have to figure out what suits it best. Once you get it set up, you just pop that pin back in and you'll have the engine where you want it to be to uh, plane out the best. So let's go ahead and put this down real quick. This engine is really, really light, easy to use. So we got full core, we got all that. Um, you have a tensioner for your throttle. So if you have this tightened, it holds the throttle in one position a little bit better. If you have this loosened, this throttle will be a little bit easier to steer and we'll go back to the same position. You have start, you have restart. Restart is when the motor's hot, just gives it a little extra gas to get it going. They just push it back down to start and then you let it idle. Overall, that's really all the features you really have with this outboard. 
other than reverse. If you need to reverse, notice we don't have reverse gear, you're going to swing this motor 180. I'm not able to do it on this stand, but you swing it 180. You flip your tiller arm around, and now you can go backwards with it. So that's why you don't have a reverse gear. So something to keep it simple. You have one less gear in the bottom, keeps it lighter, things of that nature. Now with all of this having been gone over, let's go ahead, fill this bucket up with some water, and do a cold start on it. This is a liquid coal engine, so you will need water to run the impeller on the bottom. But we're going to make sure that this vent on top is open. That way you can have gas pressure coming in. Make sure that the fuel line is on to begin with. And now I want to go ahead and pull my choke out. And this is a cold start. I haven't started this at all in the last 24, 48 hours. We'll see how it does. Three pulls, not too bad. Now we're just going to watch for water coming out of this inlet right here. That makes sure we are good. Unfortunately, I made a little bit of a mess already cold starting it. That one took three pulls. Now we'll go ahead, restart again. Instead of having my choke on, it's already ran for a minute or so. I want to go to the restart position on my throttle. Hopefully this engine will come to life. Once that engine started, I just went back to the start position, idled back down, and you can see we have a good running outboard. So three pulls have started at about 47, 48 degrees today, not terribly cold. And then it took one pull to restart it after letting it sit for about three minutes. Now we got cold water coming out of the inlet, so we know the engine is getting nice and cooled, everything of that nature. This does have a shutoff if it gets low fuel or anything of that nature. So that's just gonna protect this engine further. Now, it is a little loud, but it's a single cylinder. It's gonna have more vibration. If you have two cylinders, you're going against each other, smooths it out. Single cylinder, that's not really the case. Overall though, we'll let this warm up for a minute or two once again, let the oil flow, and then we'll give it a little bit of gas. Now that this engine's warmed up, we're not gonna throttle it up all the way, but we're just gonna see and make sure that the engine is running at its optimal temperature after a couple minutes and that it'll throttle up without too many issues out bogging the dying down. See how it bogged down a little bit? That means you're going a little too quick on the throttle. So you just gotta go a little bit slower to get it going. This is not going to have the response as an EFI motor. Um, that's just part of the carburetor. It just doesn't meter the fuel as well. Now just for a second, we're gonna pop it in forward. You can see that we are able to get thrust out of this thing. <laughs> Splashes quite a bit of water. But how about that? That's awesome. In preparation of getting this thing ready to take to the woods, I'm gonna go ahead and fill it up with non-ethanol fuel out of my small one gallon can I'll be taking with me. Have a little stabilizer in there as well. And then I'm gonna run this engine until I shut the fuel off. And once again, that just makes sure the carburetor stays empty and everything until I'm actually ready to use it again. I'm gonna go ahead and shut my fuel off. And this thing is just about brimmed up to the top. Restart it and then let it die. All right, the engine finally stopped. We're just gonna keep in that start position. It's hot enough, give it a couple more cranks, see if there's anything left. See how it sputtered a couple times? It's just getting the last bit of that fuel out. That carb is completely empty. This thing is ready to be stored for however long you really need with this fuel line shut off. If you have it stored for more than six months, even with non-ethanol fuel, you may want to pump out the fuel, put some fresh stuff in there. But this is going to be the best way to protect your engine uh, and improve its longevity in terms of not having to worry about maintenance or starting problems.
Well, in lieu of a hunting video, which I promise I am working on and hopefully will have on the way soon, I figured this 3.5 Mercury would be an excellent little video to show y'all that I'm still out here, still doing the content, but I'm really looking forward to getting this thing out in the water. Now, if you're new to the channel or you're interested in seeing stuff specifically about this outboard, stay on the lookout. This will be going on that plastic 10 foot Bass Raider with heavy loads, meaning trolling motor, lead acid battery, fishing loads, my hunting loads, all of that stuff. So if you're interested, keep a watch out. We'll see how this thing performs, fuel economy, and everything else in some pretty strong and gnarly currents out there. As well as hopefully sometime this winter or spring, I wanna go through a hundred hour service on this thing. I'll show you how it's done, how easy it is, and why you can save a lot of money just doing this yourself instead of taking it to the dealer. Now guys, I do hope you'll enjoy today's video. If you did, please make sure to share, like, subscribe for more. And as always, thanks for watching.